in another debased article from the United States government, UNICEF, which is primarily related to, supposed to be for the preservation of child life, health, and well-being, comes out with a recent article called UNICEF Report says pornography not always harmful to children. And this came out this month on the 13th of, of May. This is Washington, D.C., May 14th. says a U.N. agency is again immersed in controversy for a recent report suggesting there is no conclusive evidence that children exposed to pornography are harmed. The report published by the United Children's Fund, UNICEF, addresses how government policy can be used to protect, to protect children from harmful, abusive, and violent content online. This conclusion is based on a European study of 19 EU countries that found in most countries most children who saw pornographic images were neither upset nor happy. In fact, the report UNICEF relies says 39% of Spanish children were happy after seeing pornography. Does porn fighters disagree with the UNICEF data, saying that UNICEF report ignores the vast body of demonstrating of research demonstrating the harm of pornography to children. This is by ignoring the real harm pornography can have, UNICEF is playing roulette with children's health and safety, said Lisa Thompson, vice president and director of the Research Institute at the National Center of Sexual Exploitation. Thompson's organization, which provide expert, to expert research to inform policy decisions to end the sexual abuse and exploitation of women and children, has found that pornography can be a central driver of this abuse. Mainstream pornography contains horrific sexual abuse, rape, incest, racism, all of which children should not consume, said Thompson and UNICEF's milk toast assessment impact of hardcore pornography on children does nothing to challenge the political narrative that pornography is benign and as a result puts children in harm's way and this doesn't surprise me we're going to read the best of this of course america is unicef's largest donor and so i've said this before that in relation to women especially young women we're seeing uh, more of, especially in the West, we're seeing a much more hypersexualized viewpoint towards women. Even though for quite some time, the narrative was um, not to view women just solely as sexual objects. And then we've seen the introduction of uh, things like, for example, Twitch. Twitch, where women t uh, typically expose themselves, especially in the most uh, recent events, talking about tubs and pools where women are scantily clothed on twitch uh, and then of course to things like um like only fans where women can and typically do utilize it primarily for racy pictures very similarly with other forms of social media um like dating apps dating apps are typically utilized for to promote either a person's instagram where you'll see people with racy racy pictures etc and so this is the narrative that is being peddled for quite some time. And we know many in many politicians I've showed in other videos where there's been numerous politicians that have been uh, caught with either prostitution, child molestation. And this typically this way because this is how this is this is an old trick that goes as far back in biblical times to the utilization of sex and child molestation this happened in biblical times it was how the nations that were surrounding the nation of israel basically got the to lure the men out into sexual exploitation through prostitution um and different religions right it's one of the reasons why in the bible god said not to intermingle with these people of other nations not to get involved with women other nations because they will induce you to serve other gods and so it, it doesn't surprise like for example you look at um many of the women in hollywood you look at a lot of the cartoons they they're a lot of them are typically sexualized in some way shape or form there's a wide variety of uh, youtubers that you can research on that talk about 
a lot of the suggestive themes that are put into um, things, especially from Disney. Disney is one of the one of the biggest ones where they typically will put uh, wording that is suggestive, clothing that is suggestive, uh, mind viewpoints, mindsets, and it's to slowly drip these things into into children from their youth on. And a lot of times, if parents are not uh, vigilant. They may view these things as just a cartoon. It's nothing really all that important, you know. And so you go from simple things like simple things like back in the days where women used to wear uh, dresses below the knee to above the knee, and et cetera, things of that nature. Where you know it slowly walks the lines back. It's not from someone conservatively wear to someone half naked, right? Because that would cause too much too much of a stir but it slowly gets dripped in like for example um what was that movie that came out on netflix i forget the one the one that had all that controversy with the young children twerking sexually etc right and of course they put a black woman as the person who was the director and of course that's just to say well hey look it's a black woman a woman was the one who was the director so everything should be okay the, the mothers were the ones who brought their children for these um for these auditions so it must have been okay because the women were bringing their children for these auditions so it's clearly okay a woman was the one who was directed she's black so it kind of gives them a, a check mark where it should where it would they could utilize to say well this is okay right because the person's black right they're mostly women female empowerment etc and so this has slowly been dripped into society for quite some time and so it goes on to say the 2020 EU kids online study uh, concluded that some children and young people intentionally seek out sexual content for a variety of reasons that sexual images might also represent an opportunity to provide answers to questions about puberty, sexual identity. Does the study encouraged uh, seeing the nuances which lead children to seek out and view sexual content online? As UNICEF says, an effort to block children's uh, children from accessing pornograph pornography online might infringe on their human rights. So you can see uh, the narrative, right? The narrative is to take those who are, and this is what I talked about in my last video. I talked about, you know, pray that you are not preyed upon. And it's because these are the ones that typically those who are predators, right? And you can be a predator in different ways, but typically they typically predators will look for the weak, but also the young, also the young, because the young lack experience. The old typically don't have the strength and the fortitude to stand and fight in various ways, right? Because they're old, maybe their faculties are not as quick as they used to be. And the young ones are typically more fearful, more easily prone to suggestion, right? To, to suggestion. Uh, su suggestive ideas or words right they typically don't have the inward fortitude to hold off on a frontal attack and that's typically why even in the wild those are the ones that typically you see the predators looking to pick off the old the sick and the young so it goes on to say uh or with human rights it says unicef bases this claim on an expansive interpretation of the international covenant on civil and political rights. UNICEF also claims that asking for age verification to access pornography online may deny children access to what it calls a vital sexuality education. It should be noted that critics charge comprehensive sexuality education is pornographic and harmful to children. UNICEF's release of this report comes just days after the U.S. Agency for International Development announced its renewal of its long-standing partnership with UNICEF, committing an additional $300 million in direct program funding. The U.S. is UNICEF's chief largest government donor, with 2020 funding reaching almost $994 million in humanitarian development programs. UNICEF generally has joined the feminist push at the United Nations to call in calls for abortion. It does not surprise me. Uh, as you can see, what an organization that should be for the safety and well-being of children 
is actually in league with women's movements and of course calls for women's rights to abort their young you know if it's uh and of course it's always a right right it's always viewed as a right as my right to choose to kill my unborn child and of course the way that they kind of gloss over that is you say well it's not really a life right it's not considered a life but if someone were to kill a woman who is pregnant that person would be guilty of committing a double homicide so the government picks and chooses when it's considered a life and this is primarily to remove men's authority within the home so that the government in essence becomes the head of the household right so the man doesn't have any authority over his home he is constantly in competition with the local government and this has been the narrative for quite some time just like for example there was a recent article in texas where a husband and a wife were getting a divorce and the ex-wife wanted to let the child who i think was like five or six and they wanted him to transition right and then the husband had to go to court he ended up losing basically stating that he does not have the right to state that his you know basically his preteen i think it was like kid was like five six maybe as old as eight i forget the person wasn't that old basically that the father had no right to state that his child that his wife could not put his child through uh this basically transfer tra transition right to medically go under the knife to have certain body parts removed and to be chemically castrated and this is just this has been going on for quite some time it's one of the reasons why america for quite some time has needed much more of a revolution excuse me much more of a revolution if not a full-blown civil war and that's just just my opinion from what i mean as far back as uh 1930s where you had the institution of the fed that's a whole another topic but basically what we're seeing is we're seeing more of the culmination uh, previously it was you know, suggestive maybe people are not quite sure why certain laws were put into place but now we're seeing just basically the fulfillment of everything that has been long coming along all these years of socialist programs totalitarianism and utilization of exploitation and this was this all this is basically rinse repeat if you don't learn from history you are doomed to repeat it and as you can see america literally is repeating the same mistakes that the forefathers did you know less than 100 years ago many of the wars that america fought were actually against such things and so the article concludes it says the children's agency was founded to help displaced children after the second world war as critics say unicef has strayed far from its founding vision and that this call for children access to pornography under the guise of human rights and sex ed underscores this change at some time the holy see stopped its annual symbolic donation to unicef this is from for the center for family and human rights and i would wholeheartedly agree that it's quite disturbing but it does not surprise me that america in essence funds this because a lot of these politicians are involved with pornography child pornography a lot of them get involved this is kind of how they snare them in they, they pull them into these things and then they dangle it over them a lot of these individuals have heard many stories and read many articles of different politicians they end up getting caught involved with pornography or involved with the exploitation of children or women but this is the overall theme of the government they get these individuals who are politicians they get them involved it's how they hold it over their head to get them to do what they want them to do but basically this is this was a very disturbing article to uh, to read and of course but it does not surprise me that america is basically circling the drain and for those who are thinking that you know this is going to go away you're literally watching the fall of an empire 